gathering for the final time at home. It's not for that's the two fun. I was looking for the other woman. I was we we basically just went to a cemetery. So most of the cemeteries, well, at least back in the day. Is that awesome? That's and the <laughs> Can I be in your way? Yeah. 
I've made this up, and this is uh, just various pictures of the island. Some of what, basically what the island used to look like. I've seen that picture, the color picture, actually. A lot of our stuff is tied to the development practice. I can drive you there. Okay, good. going on in the eastern beaches too. And in fact, I'd even argue that it was likely yeah. because what's interesting, he's born in Canada. Yeah, that's what I thought was So if he's 22, that means he's born in 1839 in Canada. But he could have been, uh, he could have been a loyalist. What yeah. went to maybe went to Halifax or also came here. All right, welcome everybody to what's turned out to be a beautiful afternoon here on the island. And I am thrilled to see everyone out here for what is often one of the most exciting parts about uh, Heritage Toronto's work, uh, which is an unveiling of a plaque. But today we're celebrating the unveiling of not just one plaque, but two plaques. Uh, my name is Sean Courage. I'm a member of the Board of Directors for Heritage Toronto and I am pleased to welcome you here to our plaque unveiling uh, for uh, two plaques. Uh, the first is the English's Boathouse plaque and the second one is a plaque about the history of Centre Island. Uh, and these are two significant additions to uh, our uh, historical plaques program and for our uh, historical interpretation of Toronto Island. Heritage Toronto is a charitable agency of the City of Toronto that works to commemorate, celebrate and remember the city's history and to communicate its history to the people of the city in a variety of ways. And uh, our plaques program helps to tell the stories of the people, the places and the events of Toronto's past. And our tours help uh, 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 fill out those stories by getting people out into our neighborhoods uh, running from April through to October and we've got information uh, in our brochures up front here which I would invite you to take if you haven't already taken uh, to get info on our, uh, our upcoming walking tours for the remainder of the summer and into the early fall. So today we're gathered, this is quite nice, I didn't realize we'd be exactly on the site of English's Boathouse, uh, which is one of the uh, plaques that we're going to be unveiling today. Uh, English's Boathouse opened on this site uh, near the uh, edge of Long Pond in the 1890s, and it was owned by John Hanlon, who was the brother of champion rower Ned Hanlon, and the great uncle to another Ned Hanlon, who I'm told is with us today. And Ned, if you're around, if you can just give us a wave. There we go. So though it was primarily a boat rental office, the building also served as a dance hall and a bike rental outpost, and I think in a lot of ways was emblematic of the kind of recreation that Torontonians engaged in uh, at Toronto Island now for over a hundred years. Uh, so what we see today in terms of boating and being outdoors and enjoying the island uh, is kind of embodied in what we're commemorating here with the uh, English's Boathouse plaque and the Centre Island plaque. What's most striking about uh, English's Boathouse is that it was very much a family affair. Uh, though the last names changed over time, the link with the founder John Hanlon to some of the people gathered here today is clear. Uh, and of course, Ted English will tell us a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, 
I'd like to thank the English, Hanlon, and Dernan families, and in particular Ted, for making this plaque and this event uh, today possible. I'd like to also thank Waterfront Parks for attending and being a steadfast supporter of our historical plaque program. And of course, I'd like to thank the staff at Heritage Toronto and the Historical Plaques Program for the work that they've put into organizing this event and all the work that went into creating the plaques that you'll see later today. And finally, I'd like to thank Scotiabank, our Historical Plaques Program sponsor, for all of the support uh, it's provided over the years. Uh, we share a commitment to engage with citizens and interpret the important places, people, and events in Toronto's history. Uh, so to start off, uh, we've got uh, James Dunn from uh, Waterfront Parks to say a few words. Thanks, Sean. Um, my name is James Dan, and I am the manager of the Waterfront Parks for the City of Toronto, and it's a, it's a real pleasure to have this job. Um, not only do I get to put on a suit and come over to the island in, uh, in July, which um, I, I get to come over to the island all the time. It's, uh, it's not a daily thing. I am really... Um, I'm able to have this as part of my portfolio and it is a true luxury to talk about the Toronto Islands. My grandparents lived on the island um, right after the Second World War. Uh, very briefly, I paddled on Long Pond throughout my growing up. Um, I went to the island school a bunch of times and now I bring my own kids over here. And the 1.4 million passengers that we took over last year share my passion for this place. It is a phenomenal spot. Um, they asked me to speak a little bit about the history of the island and then I arrived and I ran into Jimmy Jones and I just said, you know what, he's going to know way more than I do. So um, I, I want to also thank Heritage Toronto. This is great that we are recognizing an amazing, uh, amazing past that's gone on here. Um, one of the things that I've been working very hard to do is to get that kind of thing recognized because some of my predecessors actually were not very well received by Toronto Islanders, um, part of when they smashed homes down and totally transformed the island. And um, it, it's a really, it's a negative part of our history that um, certainly predates myself, um, but it's something that we have to recognize to say that this is what happened, this is, this is where it is, and now this place is busier than ever, continues to be a premier destination in not only the city of Toronto, but also Canada-wide. Uh, we, we do not market the island, we do not throw a dollar of marketing towards the island, and we continue to become a busier and busier place. So thank you all for coming, really appreciate it, thank you again. Okay, next up I'd like to invite uh, the grandson of Ed English, Ted English, to say a few words about uh, English's Boathouse. Thank you all for coming. Now we've talked about English at Boathouse, but I'd like to introduce you to another rather large family, the Clarks, which were just as much a part of English's Boathouse as am I. I had a one cousin, Paul Clark. His widow is here, Paul is deceased, but he has a rather large family and they are supportive and enthusiastic followers of the English Boathouse saga. Would you, uh, would the Clark family stand up? There we are. Thank you. We are all Englishes and Clarks. We talked about the heritage of English's boathouse being built by John Hanlon. Well, it encompassed three principal island families, the Hanlons, the Dernans, and the Englishes. The boathouse was built by John Hanlon. It was later run by Emily Hanlon Dernan, who then married Lal Solomon, one of the principal entrepreneurs of Toronto. I almost said Los Angeles, where I can't get it out of my blood. Uh, and it stood as a sentinel, and I really mean sentinel, to Manitou Road, which, as I've said before, was it stood there beckoning you to the enticing pleasures of Manitou Road, but I really think it was placed there so the Hanlons and the, and the English could get the, could get the first crack at the tourist money. As that's the first thing they saw as they passed over the bridge. The display to the left 
was put up by Richard McFarland. Richard, would you stand and take a short bow? Very short. Richard is a 35-year member of the Hanlon Rowing Club, a Ned Hanlon historian, and himself a professional archivist. And he enjoys putting up displays such as this when the Ned Hanlon statue was brought back to the island. He put up a truly magnificent display similar to that, but much, much more extensive. So I hope you enjoy what you see when they unveil the plaque. I hope it represents a, a little bit of this, as I keep saying, this, this precious stone set in the Silver Sea. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy and appreciate the history of, of the island. It, uh, as Jimmy Jones, I hope, will say, Manitou Road was the place to be on a Friday and Saturday night. You could see everyone you wanted to see and several people you probably never wished to see, but it was, it was really the, the hub of the islands. It was the social and cultural hub of the islands. Hanlon's Point was the recreational hub, truly, but Center Island was the place to be, or that's where it was at, as they say colloquial now, and thank you very much. Okay, we've teased you long enough to tell us more about the history of the island. We have reputed island historian Jimmy Jones here uh, to share with us. Mayor of the island. I don't know where that comes from. Perhaps the ambassador? Mayor, I don't know about that. But the island as a kid growing up, as uh, Ted alluded to, the main drag was the place, that was the hub. And what was on this main street is incredible. All the businesses that were here, and English's Boathouse was the start at this end, when you came over the bridge, that was the first thing you saw was English's Boathouse. And in behind that was uh, a business called uh, New Method Laundry, run by Russ McMacken and his family. And on the other side of that was a little depot where when it was um, before Brewer's Retail, it was called Hardy Cartage. And my father-in-law looked after the depot. And our beer would come and be sorted out by streets. And then we'd put, it, put in buggies and they would deliver it to your house. And on the other side of that little place was uh, Chuck Singer had built a, a business called Penguin Cleaners. And when the island was torn down, he took it to Fort Lauderdale and started Penguin Cleaners there. And on the other side of that was Miller's Hardware Store. And after that, it, was, it became Trusty Cycle Shop. And it was a little roadway that went down past uh, the hardware store that was run by Purse Miller. A little, a little path that went down, which was another English home owned by the Englishes, owned by the Englishes, and it was called the Bumble Shoot. And to this day, I have no idea why that was placed called the Bumble Shoot. Do you know that, Ted? No, that's really a mystery. And on the other side of that was a little uh, cleaning and pressing place run by Bob Laird uh, at the end of Clayton's Grocery Store. And then there was Clayton's Grocery Store, and at the other end of that was Helen Gray's Gift Shop. And the other end of that was uh, Borden's Ice Cream Parlor, where Joan McDonald used to work. And on the other side of that, was uh, Dick's Grill, a beautiful restaurant where they had a single vase with a particular, maybe a, maybe a tulip or so in, in each one of those vases. And on the other side of uh, um, Dick's Grill was Acme Farmer's Dairy, run by Ed Guthrie and uh, uh, his wife and uh, the two girls, and Ed Guthrie Junior. The two girls were Jeannie Guthrie and uh, Audrey, and Audrey married a man from Handel's Point, Johnny Barker. Is Ed Guthrie here, by the way? Ed Guthrie is very frail and decided to 
I, thank you for that, but I, uh, I knew that he was on his way. We talked on the phone, but I didn't get that last part. That's too bad. And so that was Acme Farmer's Dairy, and on the other side of that was a dance hall. No one is dancing on the deck that was put up by Bill Sutherland, who owned the Manitou Hotel. And, the other, and that was the big, huge hotel right in the middle of, the, of what, what, which is called the Avenue of the Islands now. But it was called Manitou Road back then, and that was called the Manitou Hotel. And his sign was, Dine at the Sign of the Wigwam. That was Bill Sutherland's character. Great character. Had two kids, Rona and Don Sutherland. They both passed away. And on the other side of that was a little place where you could play, uh, it was miniature golf, but he named it Lilliput Golf. And on the other side of that was Percy Hughes's variety store, barber shop, and beauty parlor, where you could go in and buy music of the day all on the sheet, and you could go and buy it for 10 cents and go to the beach and sing all this songs of the day. And, uh, and an ice cream parlor as well. And on the other side of that was a Hughes's Marketeria, which was another grocery store on the street. And at the top of the street was a big, huge rambling place, which was a dance hall, later became a bowling alley. It was called the Casino. Nothing to do with gambling. It was a dance hall. And in 1939 and 40, Lionel P. Conacher donated a trophy to all the Islanders that were playing hockey uh, at that day uh, for outstanding achievement. The outstanding achievement was walking across the bay to get to the hockey games, and my dad was a part of that. And I went away to paddle and drag a boats back in 1990, and when I came back, my house was completely rearranged, and to that day, I can't find that cup that I kept for all those years. That's a sad story for me. And so that was the end of the street on that side, on the left-hand side. The other side of the street was a huge, big hotel called the Pearson Hotel. It was a beautiful, big, white place, big white pillars in front of it, snack bar off to the side, and um, a bowling green in front of the house for their guests. And we used to shit, we did? We used to sit in the chestnut trees uh, and watch everybody coming to ball, and they would have cream-colored pants and blue blazers and proper tennis shoes to play, to play this lawn bowling game. And that was on that corner. And, the, and behind that was uh, Vince and Pete's Lamentia's grocery store and little eatery. And next to that was Tyndall's drugstore. And next to that was 24 Manitou, uh, which was owned by the Watt family that my mother and dad had rented that building and ran it as a restaurant, as Jimmy's Coffee Shop. And not for very long, probably about three or four years, and we got burned out of there, I think about 1943 or four or so. And um, yeah, so we moved over to Handless Point. And then next to that was a place called Blink Bonnie that was owned by Jimmy Watt and his family. And Jimmy Watt was a paddler with the Island Canoe Club, was a doctor, and, and, and when he finished school and medicine, he he uh, practiced medicine here on the island. And next to that was a little place called The Beaches, was run by Bob Laird and his mother, and that's the same man that had the cleaning and pressing place across the street in Clayton's uh, grocery store. And in front of that, that was a, well, there were six telephone booths. There's no telephone booths anymore, and you know that, eh? You know there's no more Superman, because everybody's got a cell phone. No telephone booths. And next to that was an outdoor uh, bowling alley that was created after the war years. Uh, and I believe it was, it was, uh, there were five lanes in that area. And next, <clears throat> and next to that was a stack bar that was connected to the Wayside Inn. And during the war years, it was run by Wessels, and uh, then it was later operated by Fran Hutchison and uh, Art Bowden. And next to that was a street called Iroquois that would take you right on down to the other end of, uh, of uh, the, the Center Island. And next to that was a police station, and to the west of the police station was a huge theater that they put in after the war years. And next to that was the fire hall, which is now down at Ward's Island, and it got recycled. It is 
the Island Canoe Club. And next to that was the, the freight dock where all the freight boats used to come in for all the businesses on the island. And it was the Aylmer and the Buttercup. Nobody remembers those names except me. And the T.J. Clark, when it was decommissioned as a ferry boat, it acted as the um, freight boat. And on the other side of that dock was the fire boat that was always backed in and ready to go if there was a fire. And that was called the Charles A. Reed. And it was named after Charlie Reed that used to live at Handless Point and work for the city. Uh, and he lived at 74 Hiawatha at Hanlon's Point. That's it, folks. That's both sides of the street. Well, if, uh, if that brief tour of uh, Manitou Road enticed your interest in island history, Heritage Toronto is uh, running a historical biking tour of uh, Toronto Island on August 28th. The brochures have information about how to sign up for that. Uh, and I'd also like to thank uh, Museum Services for setting up the artifact display and bringing uh, some of the treasures from the uh, city's uh, collection. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. See these darn plaques. <laughs> yeah. Alan Walker. Is Alan Walker here? Alan Walker. Not here, no. Um, I would like to invite uh, all the speakers to come up and uh, join me for the uh, unveiling of the plaque and some of the family members if you'd like to come up. And uh, anyone with cameras who's gonna get some pictures, position yourself now and we'll gather over here for the uh, official unveiling of the English's Boathouse and Center Island historical plaques. Are the photographers ready? Yeah, we're ready. And let's see him. take some time and come take a look at the plaques, take a look at the additional historical information and the artifacts up here and grab some brochures for the walking tours and biking. Okay, so it's rolling, <laughs> and everybody, so thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
because Ted is the consummate historian. I've never known someone with so much passion, enthusiasm for, for rowing, for Ned Hanlon, for the history of Toronto Island. And God bless you for your own boathouse and family and memories. I've just never known someone with so much heart and soul in this passionate uh, field uh, where anything's possible if you have the heart and spirit to do it. And certainly Ted has been remarkable. You've been remarkable what you've been able to pull together today, not only today, but 2004 for the rededication of the Hanlon Monument, 2008 for the 200th anniversary of the Gibraltar Lighthouse. Ted, you've been here time and again to help us in, in Toronto and Canada celebrate, remember our history. And there's no better uh, thing than, than having a plaque to, to honor your boathouse and the family history here. So thank you so much the bottom of our hearts for a wonderful, wonderful uh, program today. It's just months and months and hours and hours of effort. Uh, who better to do it than Edward A. English?
We just wanted to thank Jimmy Jones here, not to forget you, Jimmy, because uh, you added so much to today's history. And not only today, Jim, you, you've added so much to the island history. I remember when we did the structures program many years ago, and it was to do with Ned Hanlon and the island here, and you were spectacular on the video. And you're even more spectacular in live and in color. You know? So <laughs> thank you very much, Jimmy Jones.